Okay, welcome everyone to Feel Good Friday. This is the show where we share with you guys some good news from all over the world. Because, you know, everyone needs to hear some good news. Lots of, uh, lots of eventful stuff going on in the news, but we feel like it's good to hear some good news every now and then. So, let's turn this around. Alright, so before we start, please consider donating to MJKO. You can go to mjko.ca. This is the website. The donate button is in the top right. You just click on that. It takes you to the donation page. Pretty straightforward. Alright. Alright, so our first story from Belgium. Alright, Belgium to give all, res all residents 10 free train journeys to encourage domestic tourism very cool so the belgian government announced saturday that the state would hand out 10 free rides with a bike place included to every belgian residence for use across the national network between july and december wow that's pretty cool it's like the rest of the year as part of the package uh, measures to boost domestic tourism and the economy very cool good job belgium hopefully they do something like that here in canada all right, this next story from Target. This is in the States. So Target raises minimum wage to $15 an hour. That is pretty substantial in the States, let me tell you. All right, so in a move that will impact nearly 275,000 employees that will work at stores and distribution centers, Target said Wednesday it will permanently raise the starting wage by $2 to $15 starting July 5th. Oh, that's pretty soon. That's next. Like in like two and a half weeks yes so let's read some of their facts so in 2017 target announced that it's going to raise its starting rate to 15 by the end of 2020 in june 2019 it raises third wage to 13 dollars some background the federal minimum wage in the states is 725 so basically you're double the minimum wage if you work at target very cool Next story from Morocco. Morocco sends 8 million masks to 15 African countries. All right, so let's take a read. Morocco has begin, began a shipment of 8 million masks and other medical supplies to help 15 African countries in their effort to deal with the coronavirus outbreak, as instructed directly by the Moroccan King Mohammed. All right, so the aid includes 900,000 visors, 600,000 hygiene caps, 60,000 medical coats, 30,000 liters of uh, hydro alcoholic gel, 75,000 sorry, 75,000 packs of chloroquin and 15,000 packs of and something else. Oh, two drugs used for treatment of COVID-19. Okay. So, oh, gives us a list of the countries that they're going to donate to. So, all right, we got Cameroon. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to butcher these names, so I'm just going to highlight it so for anyone who wants to read it themselves. All right, so next story uh, from the States. Trained unarmed professionals will respond to non-criminal calls instead of police, says the San Francisco mayor. Interesting, interesting. So San Francisco will, officers will stop responding to non-criminal activities such as disputes between neighbors, uh, reports about homeless people, and school discipline interventions as part of police reform. Okay. I think this is a step in the right direction. We will see how it plays out. Next one from Brazil. Real de Janeiro gangs are pushing medication and supplies to their communities. So let's take a read. All right. So CNN reports that gangs in Rio de Janeiro's favelas, as you can see pictured above, implemented a system to pro provide hand sanitizer, medicine, and cash handouts to a population with no access to the Brazilian welfare system. Doctors from communities are helping the sick uh, people voluntarily. A gang member said the people who have money can get assistance. The ones who haven't just can't. Wow, interesting. You know, that's very cool to see uh, some of their gangs, you know, helping their community. All right, this next one from Nova Scotia. Shout out to Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia records sixth day consecutive day with no new COVID-19 cases. So this was about four days ago. So if the trend continued to today, that would be 10 days consecutive. So Nova Scotia is pointing no new cases for sixth day. 
All right, so they completed the 456 tests on Sunday, but no new cases were identified. So here is a map of Nova Scotia. Cumulative cases of COVID-19 by location. Interesting. All right, next. A teenager, hey, what's up, Kutula? A teenager saves a 74-year-old woman's life who shattered her femur and called for help. So there is a video. Let's take a look at the video. A heroic effort by a local teenager saved the life of a 74-year-old woman and led to a unique bond between the pair. News Channel 13's Kurjan Bianca has more on the story that is absolutely Colorado. I told you, I've been praying for you ever since the accident, every single night. It. Hannah and Betty may not seem like your typical friends. You're a best friend in disguise. You will, you will be a friend for as long as we both shall live. But a chance encounter brought them closer together than they ever could have imagined. I do have every day to be thankful for and thank th thankful that Hannah was there for me. Betty, who is 74 years old, fell down the garage stairs and fractured her femur. She was home alone. Now, luckily, Hannah lives just a couple of houses away this direction. She rescued the dog, walked down this driveway here, and heard Betty lying on the garage floor calling for help. And my dad told me, if you hop the fence and go get the dog, you're grounded. It was Betty's dog, Rusty, barking for help. He showed up here when the ambulance showed up, and I asked him, do you want to still ground me? He's like, no, you're good. So I now know I can break rules more often. The 16-year-old Palmer Ridge High School student stayed with Betty. Not every young teenage girl would have done that. She called the ambulance and waited until medical aid arrived. I am so thankful to have met somebody like you with such a kind heart. Coincidentally, Hannah's dream is to become a nurse. And my good difference in this world is to help kids with special needs because it's my passion. I always feel so happy and relieved that she's better now. The two, an unlikely pair, but now wow. bonded. Good on them. You know, the 74 year old woman, uh, you know, looks like she has recovered. So hopefully she did recover because a broken femur sounds pretty painful. But good on her for saving that woman. All right, next story from Circle K, the convenient uh, store uh, chain, right? So Circle K to donate 5 million meals to Canadian food banks, all right? So this affects Canada. So let's take a read. Circle K, a subsidiary of Alimentation Courtard, the leader in the Canadian convenience store industry, today announced it has committed to donating a portion of its revenues from fuel transactions to food banks Canada. Nice. Across Canada, customer, Consumers who choose their local Circle K stores or uh, Couchard stores in Quebec uh, to purchase fuel will be supporting their local food banks. The company invites Canadians to fill up at Circle K locations to help reach or even surpass its objective of donating the equivalent of 5 million meals. Wow. Good on Circle K. I'll be shopping there more often. Mm. All right, this next one. Selfless old man builds a dog train to take rescue dogs on adventure. Wow. So these are some pictures. All right, there's a video at the bottom. Let's take a look at these videos. actually just jump out they're pretty well behaved that they just you know enjoy the ride and stay in their little uh, seat that's pretty cool all right this next story from sports all right PGA tour so golf any golf fans in the chat so no positive case uh, coronavirus test for second straight week on the PGA tour Wow, I didn't even know golf was back, but apparently it's back. The PGA Tour has reported a second straight week of zero positive coronavirus tests at the RBC Heritage set to begin Thursday at the Harbortown Golf Links. Wow. Very cool. The, all right, the next story from Florida. A Florida man punched an alligator in the face to save his dog from being attacked. 
punched an alligator. Wow, that is absolutely insane. All right, so let's take a read. A Florida man says he saved a six-year-old dog named Loki from an alligator attack by punching the reptile in the face. Man, this guy must have a strong punch. Alligators are no joke. Uh, Trent Tweedale, an army veteran, told the news that he and Loki, a rescue dog, were on a walk near river on his farm in Weasley Chapel, Florida, when the incident occurred. He said Loki had his front paws in the water when a 12 to 13 foot alligator jumped out and tried to pull him under. I grabbed the dog's collar to try and pull him back and I ended up in tug of war match with the gator and the gator was not letting go. So I let go of the collar and I got about to knee deep in water and started pounding on the gator's head. Eventually he let go. What? That's insane. A man beat an alligator. 12 to 13 foot alligator. What? Wow. That's probably going to be a story he's going to be telling for the rest of his life. All right. Next story from Thailand. No new local COVID-19 cases in Thailand for 22nd straight day. All right. So this was from two days ago, June 17th. Wow. So no new transmission for 22nd days in Thailand. Good job, Thailand. All right. This next story from the state's U.S. Supreme Court rules LGBTQ plus workers protected from job discrimination. I did not know that they were not protected before. Let's take a read. The Supreme Court ruled Monday that the landmark civil rights law protects uh, gay, lesbian, and transgender people from discrimination and employment, a resounding victory for LGBTQ uh, rights from a conservative court. Interesting. The court decided by a 6-3 to three vote. Who are the three people voting against it? That a key provision of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 known as a title okay that bars job discrimination because of sex among other reasons encompasses bias against people because of their sexual orientation or gender identity interesting good on the supreme court you know it's 2020 you know and uh, i would have thought this would have been done quite a while ago all right this next story a single dad adopts Girl with Down syndrome rejected by 20 families. All right, so let's take a read. Alba was just a few days, few days old when she was put up for adoption by her parents because she has Down syndrome. Sadly, 20 other families passed on adopting her by the time she was only 13 days old. But her story got a happy ending when a single dad stepped in to adopt the adorable weeks old infant. Wow. Good on him. You know, being a single dad... You know, being a single parent in general is incredibly difficult. And he chooses to adopt a little girl with Down syndrome. Wow, completely selfless, selfless act. You know, so my hat goes off to him. And hopefully they have a long and happy life together. All right, this next story from Barbara Streisand. Makes George Floyd's daughter a Disney shareholder. All right, so hopefully everyone knows the story about George Floyd uh, by now. But anyways, so singer Barbara Streisand has helped make George Floyd's six-year-old daughter, uh, Jana Floyd, a Disney shareholder. Wow. Okay, so Jana posted a photo on her Instagram. Wait, Jana Floyd, a six-year-old, has an Instagram account? Most likely monitored by her mother. That's besides the point. Posted a photo on her Instagram account holding her Disney shares certificate. Thanks to Streisand in the comments. Sorry. Thank you, Barbara Streisand, for my package. I am now a Disney sh uh, shareholder. Thanks to you. All right. So let's see exactly how many shares she got. Um, according to Business Insider, shares of Disney stock currently go for 115 Before the pandemic, shares were about 140 150 Okay. Doesn't say how many shares she got, but... She is a shareholder. Very nice. There are uh, now zero active cases of COVID-19 in Newfoundland. Wow. So this was from yesterday, June 18th. So Newfoundland and Labrador has now joined the small club of regions around the world that are free of any cases of COVID-19. Woo! For the first time since March 14th, the province has not been dealing with at least one case of COVID-19. Uh, so Newfoundland and Labrador joins PEI 
as the only Canadian province without any cases right now. The Northwest Territories, Yukon and Nunavut, which have which has not had a single recorded case, are also free of the virus. Okay, so as you can see here is a chart plotting the active cases in Newfoundland. And they're at zero. Our next one from Netflix CEO. Reed Hastings donating $120 million to historically black institutions. All right, so let's read the key points. So he's committing $120 million to institutions dedicated to the higher education of students of color. Hastings and his wife, Patty Quillen, who will donate $40 million to the UNCF United... Okay, and historically black... Okay, the donation comes amid renewed calls of racial injustice after the killing of George Floyd and disproportionate COVID-19 cases. Okay. Hmm, I did not know that. I mean... Disproportionate COVID-19 cases. I did not know that. Interesting. I mean, that's not a fault of anyone. Anyways, the Germany um, and France reopen borders as Europe emerges from lockdown. Wow. All right. So France and Germany became the latest European countries to reopen their borders as the continent emerges from three-month COVID-19 lockdown. Okay, so here is a map of the COVID-19 in uh, Europe. It was especially bad uh, in Spain, France, and Italy. You know, as you can see, the larger circles indicate, you know, more cases. So good on Europe to finally be reopening. All right, this next story from Toronto, where we're from. Six beaches in Toronto opening for swimming next week. All right, so this was posted yesterday. Get ready for some splashy fun. Okay, let's see. Uh, Black cars beginning May, sorry, June 22nd. That's a Monday. Wow. Okay, so beaches around the city were never officially closed, but now lifeguards will be actively monitoring them from 11.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. each day, while outdoor pools waiting specials will also be reopening for use. Wait, outdoor pools are reopening for use? Wow. Okay, six beaches reopening for use are Bluffers Park uh, Beach, Cherry slash Clark Beach, Q Balmy Beach, Mary Curtis Park East Beach, Sunnyside Beach, and Woodbine Beach. All right. So as you can see, here is a map of all the beaches that will be open. I didn't know there was a beach there. Okay. Cherry Beach. And of course, Woodbine Beach. And let's see, there's one over here. Oh, Bluffers Park. All right. Next story from Tyler Perry. So Tyler Perry, of course, he is a very famous movie director and actor, more known for directing. Uh, Tyler Perry is paying for Richard Brooks funeral and his four kids college education so if i am not mistaken uh richard brooks um there's a fortune story about him recently in atlanta i believe correct me if i'm wrong will pay for his funeral expenses of richard brooks a black man who was shot and killed by atlanta uh police officers yes okay so atlanta i was correct people can exclusively confirm that the mogul has offered to pay for the, his children's college educations wow good move by Tyler Perry. All right, so this next one. Uh, all right, six places near Toronto where you can chill with animals. So let's take a read. So Riverdale Farm, price free, nice. Lionel's Farm, price $5. Oh, it tells you the location as well. Stouffville, Ontario. All right, next one. Far in the farms on Toronto Island. Wait, it's thirty six twenty five to go there. Hmm. All right, next one. Brook Farms, twelve dollars. In Mount Albert, Ontario. Very cool. Black Creek Pioneer Village, fifteen dollars. Hmm. Mountsburg, six fifty. Campbellsville, Ontario. 
All right, this next story from Google. Google commits 175 million to net, sorry, to black businesses and promises to diverse leadership. Wow, good move by Google. You know, I wonder how they come up with these figures, like Netflix, 120 million, Google, 175. You know, I wonder if they're just pulling numbers out of a hat, but still a very substantial amount and good move by Google. All right, so let's take a read. Google CEO said the company will commit 175 million towards supporting black businesses. The company also said it plans to increase underrepresented people in its leadership by 30% by the year 2025. The company is also ending peer-based badge checking, deferring to security teams. Okay, interesting. All right, this next story from Toronto. Massive drive through Van Gogh exhibit coming to Toronto. So Van Gogh, of course, the world-renowned uh, artist, you know, one of the best uh, of all time. He's one of the world's most so celebrated artists, and now the work of Vincent Van Gogh is coming to life like never before. An immersive new display right here in Toronto with physical distancing in mind. CTV Scott Lightfoot reports. <laughs> Where the printing presses once stood in the basement of the Toronto Star Building, there is now a massive, immersive, multimedia art exhibit. These walls are 30 feet high and you, and you see the art and the brush strokes in a way that you've never seen them before, so the immensity is the first thing that strikes you. This is a first of its kind exhibition in Canada. 52 projectors covering more than 600,000 cubic feet of space with the art of Vincent van Gogh. In order to create this, we've uh, licensed over 400 images from all over the world. And our artists disassemble them. They put them in the little parts, and then they've put them together to show us the process of how those masterpieces came about. From his earliest sketches to his most famous masterpieces, it is an attempt to take visitors inside the colorful mind of the iconic post-impressionist painter. And under no um, circumstances is trying to say that this can replace uh, you visiting the museum. I like how the uh, the person interviewing has the mic on an extension stick. That is a good social distancing protocol. And seeing uh, the real paintings. This is a completely new form of art, completely new way of understanding the art. The exhibit was planned pre-COVID-19 and organizers weren't sure how they'd be able to operate safely during a pandemic, till one organizer realized that if he could drive into the space every day, so too could ticket holders. It really was the kernel of the idea that we could turn this temporarily uh, into a drive-in experience. So we'll have people driving in and then when it's safe we'll have people walking through. The exhibit will open when Toronto moves into stage two of the province's COVID reopening plan. In the beginning, wow. it will be drive through. Very cool. You know, I wonder, um, hopefully they have good ventilation in there because if people are just driving through and it looks like a big building, I feel like the, the fumes from the car is going to get, you know, pretty, pretty uh, overwhelming. All right, this next story from Toronto. So for the past uh, few weekends, Toronto has been closing down sections of roads uh, across Toronto to allow for pedestrian use. So they first started with Lakeshore Boulevard West uh, from Stadium Road to Windermere, right? As you can see, this whole section of Lakeshore Boulevard West uh, has been closed like for the weekend for the past few weekends for pedestrian use. So pedestrians can use it to walk, run, bike, do whatever they want, right? So this weekend, they're gonna be closing Lakeshore Boulevard West again for pedestrian use, but they're also closing Lakeshore Boulevard East uh, from Leslie to Woodbine, so for pedestrian use, and also Bayview from Rosedale Road all the way down to Front Street. Interesting. All right. So this next story from the States, Outdoor Rec just got its own stimulus bill. All right, so uh, the st Senate passed the Great American Outdoors Bill allocating billions to recreation. All right, so let's do the read. All right, so Senate passed, allocating billions to support outdoor recreation in two separate ways. The first is providing 9.5 billion over the next five years to help national park services. Okay, very good. 
and other federal land management agencies address their maintenance backlogs. So federal public lands are also suffering from $20 billion in deferred maintenance costs with $12 billion in accumulated by the National Park Service as well. Of course, national parks uh, you know, need to be upkept and protected by park rangers. So good on them. Next story from TDSB. Shout out TDSB. Uh, to create a center of excellence for black student achievement. All right. So TDSB has voted unanimously. Unanimously. So good. That means no one was opposed in favor of creating a new center of excellence for black student achievement, an initiative that it says will be the first of its kind in public education in Canada. All right, so but the board says that the center will uh, be supported by 20.5 what, what? 20 .5 staff members. Is that correct? It will be supported by 20.5 staff members. How do you get half a staff member? I don't get it. Okay, let's just keep reading. Who will be focused? Yeah, that must be an error. 20 and a half staff members. How do you get half a staff member? Okay, who will be focused on offering uh, supports for black students and identifying ways in which anti-black racism is operating in the TDSB. The staff at the center will also include a social worker, a child and youth counselor, and five graduation coaches, among others. Okay, very cool. All right, this next story from uh, Canada as well. So, visits can resume at long-term care centers, retirement homes today, but with strict conditions. I'm assuming you got to maintain social distancing and wear masks while you're in there. Okay, visitors, however, will have to test negative for COVID-19 within two weeks leading up to their visit and pass a symptom check upon arrival. They'll also be required to wear face covering at all times, of course. All right, this next story from Kitchener. All right, Kitchener, Ontario. Residents moved from tents into cabins at Kitchener's newest settlement for the homeless. So very interesting how Kitchener is uh, accommodating homeless people. Okay, so let's take a look. So as you can see, the homeless people have their own small shed. Very cool. Nice. So that is a better solution than tents. All right. So this will be our last story of today. So this, of course, is for Canada. Long journey ahead feds extend served by eight weeks. All right. So the emergency response benefit that gives uh, people who apply $2,000 a month. Of course, you have to be... Uh, making less than a thousand dollars a month to be able to qualify so let's Canadians go have no Listen. jobs to go back to because of COVID-19 the Canada emergency response benefit was designed to offset some of that lost income and today it was extended Ottawa Bureau Chief Joyce Napier on what you need to know the CERB has provided relief to eight and a half million Canadians two thousand dollars a month for those who lost their jobs during the pandemic but for many it was about to run out a lot of people still need this support to pay their bills while they look for work. That's why today I am announcing that we will be extending eligibility for the CERB by eight weeks. For some of those on CERB, it's a relief. For others, just a welcome surprise. I see so many places, actually surprisingly, they're hiring. Um, I was shocked that it was extended. CERB was initially meant to be a 16-week program to last until the end of the shutdown. There are many, many more people out of work, willing to work, than there are jobs available. The government estimates the two-month extension will cost a maximum of $30 billion. This on top of the $44 billion already spent on the CERB. Now, the government wants to place conditions on the extension. Recipients will have to be actively looking for a job. We understand that we don't want to disincentivize work. So what we're, we're asking and expecting and telling people in the attestation they should be doing is, of course, looking for work. And as the country reopens gradually, Ottawa wants to keep one thing closed, at least partially, the Canada-U.S. border. The mayor of Windsor, right across from Detroit, agrees. I think they're in favor of another month's closure to make sure that we here can get from stage one to stage two. And the restrictions will be extended mm. another month. So very cool that they're extending these for benefits. 
All right, so we're going to wrap it up there. Of course, staying at home has uh, affected a lot of uh, people's mental health and well-being. So if you are a youth and you are going through some difficult times right now, please consider, you know, reaching out to Kids Help Phone. They have text, phone, live chat, and you can visit their website as well, okay? Uh, this next mental health resource is not age specific, so it's for our youth, adults. It's called Wellness Together Canada. I've covered them before. They, it looks like they've updated their website. So as you can see, adults can text and frontline workers can text as well. And you can, of course, visit our website, all right? So with that being said, we will see you next time, all right? So take care and be safe.